again, August the 20, uh, August, June the 22nd, Bob Seikowitz here, and this is a call-in show. What is the number? 923-4639. Please call. And Ben, welcome. It's nice to have you with Thanks, us. Thanks, Bob. It's great to be here this morning. I want to start off, Ben, by mentioning some good news that I've read over the weekend, and that is that a survey was performed in this area, and we, Erickson, was wound up as number nine as the one of the best employers, most satisfied employers as far as the uh, system is concerned. Uh, <clears throat> You indicated earlier that you were aware of this survey. How many of the Erickson communities were involved in this? So in this one, uh, one particular survey, this was conducted by the Washington Post. And so there were three communities that have, um, you know, kind of uh, active readership within uh, that, that range. So it's Greenspring, Ashby Ponds, and then Riderwood. Uh -huh. uh, so two Virginia communities and, and, um, and one in Silver Spring at Riderwood. So, mm -hmm. uh, so we, we combined efforts to submit for, uh, for consideration for the award. And the Washington Post uh, does all of the screening. They connect with uh -huh. uh, employees directly to ask a variety of questions about their level of satisfaction oh, really? uh, in the community for a number of different things: pay, benefits, you know, work environment, uh, support, upward mobility, th those kinds of uh, questions. And so we were delighted to find ourselves this Sunday uh, as number nine here in the Washington uh, region. And I was delighted to read it. <laughs> <laughs> but I think this is a reflection on the Erickson system, and in specifically with Greenspring, you and your staff. And we could even add in the residents. I think this was great to read something like this. It's a, it certainly is a, is a feather in the community's cap, that's for sure. And as you mentioned, uh, it, it's, it's not just employees creating the employee atmosphere and, and the employee experience. It's residents are mm -hmm. a significant component of that. So uh, we're, we're really ecstatic with that. And, um, you know, frankly, we, we put a lot of effort in not only making sure that Green Springs is a great place to live, but... Uh, we also put an equal amount of, uh, of energy and effort into making sure that it's the Good. best place to work as well. Ben, finally, I want to congratulate you and your staff on that fine rating, if you will. Thank you. So. We're, we're ecstatic. And uh, in fact, this, this uh, Friday, we're going to have a little staff barbecue out behind Garden Ridge to uh, celebrate kind of the halfway point, if you will, in the year. And uh, that's going to be one of the celebrations oh, really? is, uh, oh, is to celebrate that top workplace uh, award. Okay, the, folks, this is a call-in show. Now, we have our executive director, 923-4639. Ben, what news do you have for us this morning? So I've got just kind of a, a couple of updates I wanted to share, and, and uh, I want to put an asterisk before uh, sharing some of this. This isn't in, in intention to, you know, to, to brag on the community, if you will, as much mm -hmm. to, to say we're, we're looking as an employee group um, at – you know, some milestones and, and part of what is prudent for us to do at the midway point in the year is to say, how have the first six months of the year gone? And oh. then setting up, what does the next six months look like? And I'll we hold have, the thought. We have a call. Please turn down your audio before you call. Good morning. You're on Channel 6 Call-In Show. Thank you. Uh, obviously, the halls at night, the uh, heat and cooling is cut back. And my question is, are the apartments affected by being cut back at night uh, from some zone outside of our apartments? Thank you for your call, okay. and we'll answer it on the line. All right, thank you. Thanks so much for the call. Um, it, you, you hit the nail on the head that, uh, that there is a computer system that monitors um, the cooling and heating capacity mm -hmm. for the campus in any of the common areas. And... Um, as you know, is, is prudent for us to set the temperatures back uh, in the evening times or mm -hmm. in the middle of the night while folks are, um, are scarcely up and about. Uh, and so the, the question was, does that also affect the interior apartment home? Mm -hmm. And the answer is it does not. So the thermostat within the individual resident apartment homes completely controls uh, the ambient air temperature within the apartment That's home. good to know, Ben. Yeah. So this lady's Wondering about whether or not her, I guess her air conditioning was being 
increased as far as the temperature is concerned to keep it off, but right. that's not true. That's correct. That's not true. And it, there are, um, you know, this this weekend. I know that we had some quite a quite a storm that blew through uh, we, uh, here on Saturday, and complete with you know tornado warnings, etc. And um, so we did have some power blips here and there across campus. And I think the one circumstance that obviously would be affected is if camp, campus power uh, were to be out temporarily or or to blink. Uh, potentially, that would uh, mm -hmm. affect that uh, that heat pump. Uh, for the air conditioning purposes. As an aside, Ben, uh, Saturday I was running or going to run a movie and everything went out. Yeah. So we have no movie capabilities right now, but uh, Channel 6 informs me they're going to go down and take a look at it. Great, great. Uh, Go on, getting back to your updates. Sure. So just kind of looking at a, at a mid-year, um, you know, process to, to evaluate how are things going, you know, across the campus and, uh, and then more importantly, looking forward for the next six months of what do we still have yet in front of us yes. uh, to, to continue to accomplish. So uh, a couple of, you know, really nice indicators, I think, of, uh, of a lot of activity and positive momentum uh, building here at Greenspring. Um, when we look, you know, first and foremost, uh, across the continuum, uh, the, the Village Fair was was held last week, and uh, and that was just an awesome sight to see the number of residents, and uh, whether it's the the local artisan or whether it's a club mm -hmm. or group or activity uh, that is being put on. To me, it was just such a a vibrant showcase um, of resident life here across the the, the campus, and so uh, that was just a, a fantastic sight to see. Um, you know, ov overall, I think when we look at the number of volunteers. We know how important volunteering is to the fabric of our community and certainly to the mission of sharing our gifts. Um, and we have more than 700 active volunteers on campus each and every and single then, month, which is just phenomenal and, to yeah. see. In addition to that, uh, obviously earlier in the year, we celebrated the 31 scholarships that were handed out as uh, a token of generosity from our residents, our vendors and staff that contributed to uh, the scholarship fund. Um, to date, we've awarded more than $1.4 million oh, in scholarships that is since amazing. 1998. Yeah. $1.4 so $1. million. $1.4 million. And often the story that I hear that's, that's the tagline associated with that is, uh, is often, I wouldn't be able to pursue higher education unless. So, uh, mm -hmm. so those thoughtful gifts and generous gifts from residents and vendors and staff that make that possible are really, truly the vehicle for... Um, you know, for our, our young generation to, uh, to achieve what it is that they aspire to achieve. Ben, I think we ought to pass out a few kudos to the residents for their donations to come up with this tremendous $1.4 million overall uh, donation to the scholars. And, and that's what's actually been committed. There's, there's far more than that that has actually been yeah. raised, which... Uh, is fantastic to mm -hmm. see. So mm -hmm. not only do we have, uh, you know, the ongoing uh, ability to award scholarships year after year, but we're continuing to fundraise to uh, see to it that we can uh, continue to keep that program alive and well. Uh, ben, since we're on Channel 6, and I, I'd like to delay further updates until we chat with us. Sure. But Channel 6 informs me that uh, there are some great things coming here. We're going to go HD all the way, and there's going to be some repercussions at first, but then after the new equipment is installed, we're going to have a prime television studio. And you can probably fill us in on some of the finite points in reference to what I'm chatting about, the sure. new equipment. So what, what you're um, referencing, Bob, is that, um, that Channel 6 and 8 and, and 56, as a matter of fact, mm -hmm. are going to be digitalized, mm -hmm. uh, which just simply means right now the way that we're broadcasting the signal across the campus um, is done, believe it or not, in an analog signal. Yes. Uh, and an analog signal to, for any, any techies that are out there is a lower quality signal than that of a digital signal. Mm -hmm. Uh, so the bottom line is uh, we've got some equipment uh, here within the studio, but also some, uh, some fiber cable that needs to be run um, to connect certain points of the campus in order to allow for that digital signal to be broadcast throughout the entire campus. 
the, the good news is that not only will we be able to, to benefit from um, you know, our, our lip movement to be in sync with the audio that's, that's on the television, uh, the image and, and the quality is, is much crisper yeah, as well. That draws some minor complaints from people. I'm watching, but the guy's lips aren't <laughs> moving. That's right. And, uh, and, and one of the other benefits that we're also looking forward to is that, uh, is that potentially, um, you know, for channel six and eight, right now we have to switch over to the input. Yeah, One do. thing we, and we still have to finagle a little bit on this, is we're hoping that once it's digital, uh, once the, the signal is being broadcast digitally, that we're able to access channels six and eight in a different manner that will be much more user friendly for residents. We'll use the one remote, right? I certainly hope so, but yeah. uh, you know, every every TV is a little bit different, yeah. so it's it's not an across the board blanket statement I'm able to make on that. But um, you know, so some exciting uh, changes. So as you mentioned, there are some repercussions, and for the month of August, there's some downtimes that the studio will be uh, will be down for uh, components of uh, of that installation. Uh, to follow up on that, the piece of paper I have here says that the studio may be shut down from August the 10th until the 28th right so there'll be a we're going to pre-tape all these shows and we'll show them aha we have another call great good morning you're on channel six hi bob i have a question regarding what you're just talking about will the upgrade include live coverage for the theater and the academic room uh similar to what is provided in the chapel and that's my question okay so Fred will answer it on the, on the line. Thank you for your call. Fred, I'm going to have to get back to, uh, to the community. I'm not uh, sure whether or not the live broadcasting capability um, is in place with, uh, with, with the new upgrade or not. I'm um, not but, sure but either. I, I can certainly get that information. We can follow up on a future show. That's okay. So I hope Fred will go along with that. And by the way, remember, 923-4639. And my guest here is our executive director. Okay, Ben. So, in a, I understand also, along with the digital tool, uh, changeover, we're going to have some new furniture. So, uh, so I've been told. Yeah, I, I think furniture is is something that you know waxes and wanes. I, I haven't seen uh, anything in terms of the specifics uh, for the setup of the studio. You know, I want to make sure that we're very prudent with the dollars that we do yeah. spend and. Obviously, if there are some replacements that need to be generated, we'll look to Diane and, and the team to identify exactly what those are. But I think, uh, by and large, you know, let's um, w w one, one foot in front of the next. And I think the, the most important upgrade is to make sure that the broadcast capability is mm -hmm. in sync with, uh, with the high-definition television offering first. Well, I must, I must hasten to add, this was a rumor that I heard. <laughs> and you know how rumors are. <laughs> but getting, getting back to reality, I want to comment also on the grounds. Yeah. They are outstanding. Aren't they great? They're, we're we're, we're so fortunate. Yeah. John and, and his team, the grounds crew, just does a phenomenal job to, uh, to keep that up year over year. And uh, it's just a great pleasure to walk across the campus yes, and is. enjoy the beauty that we, that yes, we have here. So if we could just control the humidity out there a little bit better, I think we could enjoy it um, <laughs> now, more thoroughly. Let's get back to your updates. Brother. Sure, a couple of other um, you know kind of signs of, of success, if you will, and mm -hmm. um, you know in addition to the list that I mentioned previously, um, you know as we look um, to some of the other fundamentals, uh, one of the things I think that's important for residents hiring the management company is to deliver not only in the programs and services here in the community, but also um, on, on the, the running the business of Greenspring yeah. and making sure that, uh, that things financially are moving in the right direction uh, for our campus. And so the, uh, the budget that the board approves, uh, it's up to myself and the management team to deliver on that budget. Uh, and the good news is that we're tracking mm -hmm. uh, thus the, you know, almost six months uh, through the year uh, positively to where we're within that budget uh, so far for the first six months. Um, in addition to that, one of the most important kind of drivers for the success of that budget is, is, um, is new occupancy. And so making sure that occupancy uh, main, is maintained in a, in a very high fashion here on campus. So we strive for 99%. Although we started out the year, uh, believe it or not, down at uh, about 97.8 or 97.9%. Uh, we've been climbing uh, since that point. So, mm -hmm. uh, so sales appointments, uh, net reservations, 
all of those indicators are up year over year from this time last year. In fact, new settlements, so um, that when, when a resident actually takes the keys and, uh, and puts down the full entrance deposit, are up 40% from 40? this time last wow. year, which is, uh, which is a really nice uh, sign to see. Eric, and Eric and his crew are doing a great job. That's right, absolutely. Uh, when we look at healthcare, is is a really important component of our uh, community, and not only uh, the integrated healthcare network that we offer is a uh, is a, a significant differentiator from other communities out there in the local area, uh, but healthcare is is one of I, I think our bread and butter offerings to mm -hmm. uh, to what um, you know allows residents to to have great peace of mind here on campus. So when we look across the healthcare continuum, certified home health. Uh, just recently in the month of June was selected by a national quality organization as the agency of the month, uh, which oh, really? is a fantastic um, outcome. And that really had, had to do with some positive um, uh, trends that we're seeing in, uh, in reducing numbers of rehospitalization as well as um, uh, oral medication uh, compliance wow. uh, objectives uh, through our certified home health division. When we look at outpatient rehab and hospice, obviously they had unannounced licensing uh, visits earlier this year and both of those had a perfect survey result which mm -hmm. is uh, fantastic to see uh, as we look at skilled nursing and assisted living not only did we have solid surveys both significantly better than state uh, averages for both assisted living and skilled nursing um, the quality metrics there are trending uh, similarly so when we look at things for example uh, specific quality indicators i'll give you one example of falls for Please. example um, when we, we measure falls uh, in our skilled nursing facility, we find them 10% lower than the national average um, for all skilled nursing facilities across the country. When we compare our, our same services in assisted living, uh, believe it or not, assisted living for the same fall metric um, are 50% better than the, the other assisted living uh, facilities that are out there across the country, which is just fantastic to see. To boot, uh, we've we're blessed with this wonderful medical center here on campus, and yeah. um, I think sometimes we forget the convenience and the quality that exists right there um, over in town center is uh, access to great health care. And um, so far this year, we've had more than 1,200 same-day appointments that have been honored in our medical center so far this year. I also would like to say something, and that is the wait time is minimal. Yeah over there yeah unless there's an emergency and a doctor sure. has to be some results but normally sure if there's <clears throat> if there's anything longer than normal it must be because something is happening but i think that outfit over there is great sure my my father um you know lives here locally in fairfax station and had some health issues over over the uh, winter holiday uh -huh. and so as i was coming back and forth um, helping him to try to make some appointments with mm -hmm. his specialists uh, at off campus. He was running into appointment um, times and, and availability to say he really needed to get in and see his oh, doctor. Really? He had some issues going on with his liver and um, they were quoting him two, three week appointment dates, you know, out. Oh. And, uh, and it just, that, that's the way that the rest of the, the outside uh, world works. And, right here on campus, uh, the ability to offer 1,200 same-day visits mm -hmm. um, just so far through the first six months of the year is just Excuse phenomenal. Excuse me, cheap. Ben, but 923-4639. This is a call-in show. You have a question for Ben? Get on the phone. So I guess in a nutshell, when you, when you look at, you know, some of what I view are indicators of success, the re resident life alive and well, um, you know, across the, the campus, when we mm -hmm. look at financial metrics really hitting uh, on all cylinders. One other example of that is the credit rating agency of, of uh, Fitch. Um, Weren't we just raised Yeah, again? They, they upgraded our, our credit rating from, uh, from A to A positive, um, which, you know, in my book, A plus is, is as good as it gets. Uh, it although is. in the credit rating world, it can get a little bit better than that. But, um, but when we lo look at ourselves uh, across the, 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 the continuum, I think we're you know, within the top 15 um, continuing care communities um, across the country, which is just a, an outstanding achievement and a testament, I think, to, uh, to the prudence in which we run uh, this community. Here again, it's you and your staff. Well, I, I, I can only take just a very uh, sliver of that credit, but, uh, but the team just does an awesome job. And, mm -hmm. you know, I think it just shows residents and staff working together really make Greenspring a very special place. Do you have to, a sign uh, on your 
the buck stops here. <laughs> I should. <laughs> <laughs> I should. Uh, I'd like to talk about one other subject. Sure. And that is the signature menu coming up. Yeah. Oh, we here we a... go. <clears throat> good morning. You have a, you're on Channel 6. Uh, good morning, Ben. Uh, thank you for taking my call. Um, I live in uh, CS229. You are familiar with my name, Ben. It's Miss Paskin. Yes, ma'am. Um, referring to the first caller, the lady was talking about the heat in the hallways and the temperatures and do they affect the apartments or not. Um, I can understand that perhaps they don't, but the amount of uh, humidity in my apartment is so bad. Um, in fact, it was 60 plus the other day and I went to open the door on a piece of furniture uh, in my teak unit and it's jammed. Uh, there's so much buckling from the humidity. Um, also, uh, silly things like the salt and that kind of thing, they're solid in the shakers, you have to bang them. And the foam stripping that was supposed to have helped that I had put in in the windows during the bad weather when it was windy and very cold has done very little to um, alleviate the problem with the windows. They're so badly fitted. And, you know, it's just a bit disappointing. I can't get into getting a humidifier because the darn things, the bucket things, are just too heavy for me to lift. I just can't do it. Yeah. don't know whether you've got any thoughts on this, Ben, and thank you again. Absolutely. Thank you, Ms. Paskin. Thank you. I think a couple of, you, you hit on a couple of things. Um, you know, one is is as we look at windows, right? So yeah. I, I've I've heard quite a bit about windows in the short uh, time frame in, in uh, being here at Greenspring. And uh, as I mentioned at, at prior coffees with, with Ben uh, Sessions, is that we we look to put a plan together to uh, evaluate window replacements for the campus. Mm -hmm. um, and this is going to be a multi-year project, without a doubt. Um, but cer certainly something I think we need to take a, a, a fresh look at here in the community. So today we have a window vendor that comes out and assesses uh, windows that are in need of adjustment. Um, and quite a bit can actually be achieved through uh, just simply adjusting those windows. There are times though that they do deem that a window needs to be replaced and frankly we'll uh, make those replacements uh, mm -hmm. when the vendor deems necessary. In addition to that, I think um, you know the the question about you know humidity within apartment homes. Um, I, what I'd say is to to consistently you know keep your thermostat regulated within the apartment home, and uh, and and that that will um, you know be effective. I think at maintaining an ambient temperature that is appropriate. Um, th there are going to be some challenges uh, with that as as we look at you know the building. As we know, we've got some building envelope. Uh, opportunities to improve um, that, that building envelope uh, as we realized in the in the winter time with some sprinkler uh, pipes yeah. that had burst uh, and so there is a consultant right now that is uh, providing us with a bid to uh, to perform some remediation work across the the entire campus to fix that issue once and for all and some of that will also Im improve kind of the seal of the building if you will to lock out some of the exterior uh, factors my question would be Number one, is the re window replacement in the budget? And if not, number two, where would the money come from to replace all these windows? Yeah. I mean, when you, when you look at the budget, is there a line item right now in today's budget that says window replacement? There's not. No. Um, do we have funds allocated for any window that needs to be replaced on campus today? Yes, we do in, in, in you know, short quantity. If we needed to replace every single window on campus today, um, do we have those funds budgeted? No, we don't. Uh, mm -hmm. here, here's what I know through my conversations with the board mm -hmm. is the board is very interested uh, in this, this area. I've had conversations with them as, as have uh, some other residents while the board has been here on campus. And the board is also looking to us to come up with a plan to say, um, you know, give us what your recommendations are to uh, replace mm -hmm. windows where they need to be replaced and, and, um, and the board will consider any funds that need to be allocated for that. So the funds actually would come from our reserve pool okay. uh, of cash, which uh, good news is we, we've been very prudent to, uh, to, to save our nickels and dimes here on campus and that way they're available for projects such as window replacements. 
Uh, just as an aside, I'm having a window replaced. Uh, I noticed that my one of my window is cracked. Is so it? It's going to be replaced. Yeah, great. Good morning. You're on Channel 6. Yes, good morning. It's um, old uh, Bugaboo again here, Ben. <laughs> um, one thing I meant to mention while I was talking to you was when I um, moved into Greenspring, uh, the nice part about it in the advertising was a statement that the apartments are climate controlled. And I find this a little difficult to believe at times. Well, thanks Thank for the you. comment, Ms. Ms. Baskins. I, I, I think, you know, truth in advertising is that they are climate controlled, right? Mm -hmm. I, I think there's a thermostat inside of the apartment home that provides, uh, you know, your sole discretion on, uh, on the heating and cooling, you know, capacity of that uh, particular unit. Um, the question is, you know, is it, is it um, as convenient or, or meeting those needs all the time? I'd say if you have an individual issue in your apartment home, make sure that our general services yeah. team is aware and, by all means, they can come out and assess the situation and That's make any clue, modifications that, that, that have to have to occur. Check with general services yeah. if you have a question. I want to make sure not to to dodge your your original question about, um, the, signature. about the signature menu. So mm -hmm. uh, we started to to mention that before we got a couple of phone calls. And yeah, well, that's so. Fine. Signature menu is one of those uh, th those projects that's that's on the horizon. So so I was talking about some things we've accomplished. I think as a community in the mm -hmm. first six months of the year, and what does the next six months look like? Uh, I think there's a couple of uh, of projects that we look to get underway. One of which is the signature dining program. Mm -hmm. So signature dining is um, is really a, a culmination of things, if you will. Uh, one of which is a new featured menu that offers an expansion of uh, menu items, both entrees, you know, soups, sides, salads, uh, et cetera. And so, uh, so that will be more similar to, uh, to kind of a, a restaurant offering, if you will. And when you think of um, our menu every single day, it changes every single day. And although there's some always available items, uh, most of the core uh, elements of our, of our menu are, are shifting day to day. And the outside restaurant world, that's a very, very difficult task to manage um, from a culinary production standpoint. And so um, we really uh, strongly feel that we can improve the overall quality uh, of our meals, the consistency of those meals, and, and frankly, some things like temperatures and the efficiency as a, of those, those meals through this, uh, this new program. But Ben, right now, we have three entrees and five options. There's eight different entrees that really we mm -hmm. could order mm -hmm. and now i'm wondering how we're going to improve on the eight yeah so the the new menu will will have probably about 25 options available but the difference in it in that uh, instead of all 25 of those options changing uh, day after day they will remain stagnant for a period of time and mm -hmm. so uh, so much like outside uh, restaurants is um, to to change a menu seasonally um, and that way we're taking advantage of the, you know, the, the, the freshest um, ingredient options that are available you know, in the market uh, at that time of year. Um, that's one of the foundational elements to this new program. Uh, well, um, I know we just touched on this and in programs to come, this is, more information will be forthcoming. Indeed. Uh, one one thing that, that has also been in parallel um, to this program that I've heard some angst and, and, you know, not only heard, but also witnessed firsthand some angst, I think, in residents um, dining in the restaurant venues um, over the last two weeks um, are wait times yeah. that, are, um, that people are experiencing in, uh, in those dining venues. So I wanted to just take a, a quick moment to Please comment do. about that. Um, the, the, the primary, I think, premise and why this is happening is really not a function of the staggered seating program per se. Mm -hmm. That's adding some complexity to it. However, it has to do with the time frame when we change the venue hours of operation from four o'clock to 4.30 on account of, uh, of oh, yeah. the Fairfax County Fairfax school system school changing system, yeah. um, their hours that our high school students um, will be in school in session. So, um, so what we're doing, uh, I know that the camera won't be able to see this directly, but um, we're getting uh, regular updates and reports um, on a daily basis that will evaluate um, mm -hmm. our wait times in our, in our dining venues. And one thing I think that we're trying to do here this week that will help uh, to sharpen um, you know, those wait times and mitigate those 
is, um, is publishing for residents uh, what are our anticipated um, peak times of service in the dining room. So as those dining venue hours of operation have shifted, uh, unfortunately our standard patterns and behaviors have not. And what we yeah, see is true. that then the folks that were coming down to dine in our, our dining venues at the four o'clock hour are now colliding with that 4.30 crowd that's coming down and we're ending up with a huge surge in the very beginning of the meal process. Yeah. So I think people think, well, gee, I'm gonna get a around this by just coming earlier and waiting <laughs> before the actual restaurant venue opens. And what we find uh, and what we're gonna break out for residents and, pu and publish it at the podium is that uh, between the 4.30 and 4.45 session um, of seating, that's right when the, our venues open, is when we're, we're, we're seating the largest number of, of residents and guests during those windows. Uh, the, and then you'll windows. concentrate on that. That's right, to, to give you an indication in the first 15 minutes of service over at the Jefferson, for example, uh, on Friday night, we um, seated 127 residents in 15 minutes. That's pretty so, good. So um, you rival that with any local Washington area mm -hmm. restaurant, and I venture to guess that, uh, that we're seating a, a larger number of, of residents in, uh, in, in short order than any other restaurant here in the, in the Washington area. We still need to be better than that, though, and, and part of it, when we're, when we're seating folks in, in mass quantities right up front, the standard time and experience for someone to complete their entire meal mm -hmm. is roughly about an hour thereafter. And so when we look at um, you know, in the first 15 minutes of service, 50% of the capacity is realized already in that yeah. restaurant in, in 15 minutes. So another 30 minutes goes by and we've reached our full capacity. Well, that time frame then will be about an hour later that those seats start turning mm -hmm. over as residents finish their meal and mm -hmm. move out of the dining room. So what happens when you come up 30 minutes or 40 minutes into that meal is you experience a wait time. Sure. And that's exactly what's happening uh, within our restaurant venues today. Ben, I wish we had more time. We're <laughs> down to about 30 seconds ago. Yes, sir. And I truly want to thank you for being our guest this morning. You've been just a fountain of information and a lot of it's been good. So we look forward to your next visit with us. Thank you very much, Bob. And we also want to thank those who called in for their interest. Thank you.